everyone and welcome back this is the the part two of this mini series uh, grafana prometheus and the nest yes in the last video we talked about what all different steps are involved in this video we are going to create uh, the containers for the node.js and the postgres and we will also run the migrations we will also test the end-to-end -end, uh, setup of uh, the nest.js application with the postgres container and then we will talk about uh, prometheus and grafana and then we will set up their container so we'll have uh, this big docker compose file but before that we will see how you can dockerize the nest.js application with the postgres hi everyone and welcome back so this is the part one of the series uh, nest.js with the grafana and prometheus i mean this is like a mini series we will have a couple of videos in the last video we talked about all different uh, things we are going to do to have this grafana prometheus setup with the nest.js uh, application where we can expose the nest.js matrix into grafana through prometheus so the first thing we want to do is dockerize the node.js application so this is a simple node.js nest.js application and we want to first dockerize it dockerizing it just not like okay creating a docker container for the node.js application no but even running the nest node.js nest.js application on the container in such a way that it should be able to run the migration should be able to connect to the postgres container in the same network and also the volume mounting and a port mapping and uh, this nest.js application when bootstrapping the container should be able to run the migration and there is a postgres container also so when the postgres container is booting up it should be also be able to create a respective database because now when the node.js container is up and running we also want to run the migration so it's like uh, contains lots of things lots of moving pieces it's just not okay simply dockerizing the node.js application but it's a full-blown setup which we needed for uh, our final objective with uh, where we want to just integrate uh, node.js or nest.js with the grafana and prometheus so what we are doing we are actually creating the docker file first of all docker file is actually needed for uh, creating the docker image out of uh, application so for node.js we will write a docker file when you build it you will get a node.js container okay similarly postgres post for postgres we are we don't need a docker file we can just pull the doc uh, postgres image from docker hub and here you can see in this whole docker compose because we are going to create a local docker network and we want to have these two containers inside it so they can talk to themselves one another node.js should be able to talk to the postgres container for the database need it should be able to run the migration it should be able to connect to the database and while putting up the application so here we need to work on port mapping volume mapping how node.js and postgres containers are created like node.js is totally depend on the postgres you cannot bootstrap the node.js application without having postgres and here we will be doing a volume mapping like how we can uh, map the node.js app volume and the database volume because database for the postgres container we need to persist the data also like because you are running a migration tables and all so it's better we persist it so whenever you run it again already have the data available now first take a look on docker compose file Docker Compose is actually a file which contains what all containers you have. We have an app application which is a Node.js, Nest.js, and the Postgres. These are the two containers or two services we have inside Docker Compose YML file. And if you see in the app, we are building it, the Docker uh, building the Node.js application using Docker file, port mapping, volume mapping, and here is my Postgres container which contains the environment like okay, what is a Postgres user, Postgres password, and what is a volume mapping and here the interesting thing is about this volume mapping because here if you see i am trying to override the entry point in init.d so what is this i mean sometimes we do uh, we try to create an entry point for the docker container and what the entry point is entry point is nothing but uh, some specific commands which we want docker container to execute when it is bootstrapping up so what are there are two things which i want to do when the postgres container is up and running i want to create the databases right away container doesn't have the database up and running i mean you you have to write a script i will be giving instruction to the postgres container using this entry point command 
which I have written at line 23. I have some local script in Docker uh, entry point that will be mapped inside Docker utils. I have some script that will be mapped to the entry point of the Docker container. Similarly, when we are booting up the Node.js container, I want to run the migration. I want to run the build. I want to maybe run the test cases. So these are the some specific commands which I want to run on the Docker container. So and these are the specific commands. So I can write a simple script and can override the entry point for the Docker container for Node.js or Nest.js. These are the two special things we are doing, which is to make our Docker container ready. Database container with the databases and Node.js Nest.js container after running the migration. So it has everything. APIs will work as expected because we have already executed the migrations. And then we have a volume mapping of DB data and the port mapping. This is the Postgres container. And this is the Node.js container, uh, which is building this Docker file from the Node.js app. And here I am specifying the, the, uh, the connection URL for the Nest.js application to connect to database. If you see here, I am passing, I'm not passing localhost. Why? Because I want Node.js to run inside a container. Inside a container, it only knows uh, Postgres host. I mean, these are inside a network. There are two services, app and Postgres. You cannot just use localhost because for the container, localhost is nothing. Localhost we use uh, when you are running Node.js outside the container, outside the Docker, and the Postgres inside the container. I mean, this is how I used to do the development. I just create only one container Postgres. Okay, I got the database up and running. And then I can just connect to that using just a simple local host because we already do the port mapping of the Postgres okay, the host port and container port. Test API, this is how we are going to connect to this database. So what we are doing? First in the phase one, we are creating a Node.js container, Postgres container, Docker Compose with the default network. Docker uh, app can use these Postgres containers be able to access the postgres container because they are in the same network and running the migrations and all we need to do this the second the second phase we are doing is so we are going to dockerize the nest yes node.js application so we are going to write a init or entry point script for postgres container and we are going to write a init or entry point script for the node.js container that is important because both these scripts are helping us to bootstrap these individual container or initialize it in such a way that they are ready to be used. Node.js has already executed migration. Postgres has the database ready. So just only now to hit the APIs. So here Node.js app, once we have a database up and running, we should be able to run the migrations. For database, the database URL looks like this. For database, we have an entry point script, which is I mean, there is some script which we are just uh, mounting on the Docker containers entry point. Right here, this is the Docker utils. And inside the Docker utils, if you see, what do we have? I mean, I just wrote a, some simple script which I'm using from a long time. What it, what it is doing? It is just helping us, me, helping me to create a database, create user and database. If there are multiple databases, it will create it. So when you do Docker Compose up or I even spin up the Docker container for the Postgres. What it will do is it will look into this script and it will say, okay, I want a uh, user is asking me to create the database, create the user and assign all the privileges. So that is happening here. Now this is my Docker file for the Node.js application and what the Docker file contains, the basic thing. Why I'm specifying this Docker file because Whenever you are writing your own or just copy paste from somewhere, you will always face the challenge because in the Docker container, you cannot do things with the root user. So you need to have a node user, which is copying your package log JSON, package JSON files to the Docker container. And that specific user should be able to do npm install, npm run build against your container. Because once you copy the things inside a container, you can just access them but you need a permission. So I just created a user node. All these issues of uh, not able to access the container package log JSON, all these things will go away with this approach. I'm uh, assigning the permissions to this user node. 
extracting all the the files. So this is the Docker file. When you do Docker build on this Docker file, it creates the container. So because uh, this is the Node.js application, and we have wrote a Docker file. So when, through the Docker compose, when we start this container, first it will build it. When you are doing a Docker compose up, first it will build it. It will create a Docker image out of it. And when you up means we need to spin up the container. Container will get created from the Docker image which you have built. Another important aspect is okay. Let's say you are uh, using Docker for the local setup. Now, uh, when you are changing the code locally, is it able to reload the application or restart the container in the the no Nest JS container? Or if it is happening, then how? So for that specifically, we need to do the volume mapping at line fifteen. The whole nest.js folder I am mapping with the app directory of the container. So whenever because here we are using code reloading. So whenever I change the code, I'm already running this start debug, which has the watch mode at line number eight. NPM run start debug. It is just using nest start watch watch and debug. So it will keep watching your source files. Whenever there is a file update, it will automatically restart and for reloading. The application on the container because you might be changing the file but the container is not reloading the application that's also trouble right so for that you need to do the proper volume mounting of the nest js application folder into the container so this is my docker file and here line 12 what the line 12 is doing it is having docker utils entry point in it sh there is some script is trying to override using that script I'm trying to override the docker entry point because I'm copying that file inside a user local bin docker entry point so these things we can do to add some entry point command for the container so what this command will do this there is some script I have I want to run this when the container is coming up right those commands are nothing but npm run build npm run migration run if uh, the line 12, 22 and 23 says enable I for a migration enable that means we want to run the type of our migration and npm install on the container okay so this docker and so this docker entry point has those specific commands we can just take a look what uh, is the content of this particular file init.sh so this is the par part of the nest.js source code and here you can see I'm doing two things npm run build and npm run migration run if the migration is enabled and this is what i'm doing on the container and when you are doing a migration run means node.js is trying to talk to the postgres container for running the migration here a simple main.ts for spinning up the application so this is my database url to which we are connecting and through the init script it is booting it is creating the test databases for me this is the host port and the container port and these are the two different volumes the app volume and the database volume so i'm just doing a docker compose up now so i'm just doing docker compose down deleting the volumes and the images because i want to show you the simple fresh setup for everyone so i will just do docker compose up after this docker compose up so what it will do is it will pull the the node.js image which is if you go to the docker file docker compose it contains because here we are creating a node.js container through the docker file and the postgres we just need to pull from the docker hub and inside the docker file of the the node.js it is also pulling the the same uh, node 18 image it will take some time and then we got both the container it starts application so postgres is up and running it has created databases like we are creating two database through the init script and then we are doing uh, running some basic commands here you can see it is running the entry point script the node.js container it is doing npm run build and then npm run migration run this is what i i want to show that when the when the node.js container is up and running it will first do the build and then it will run the migration and npm run migration run is nothing but a type orm migration script that will just uh, populate the database tables for you because once you have that, your APIs will be up and running and you should be able to hit the data. They won't complain, okay, internal server error because you don't have tables. Tables I have created. And this is hot module reloading is also enabled. That means 
when you are changing the file in the source code it is reloading the container that has happened because we have added a volume uh, mapping also for the node.js application all the node.js source code is mapped to the container app folder so when you are changing this obviously they are pointing to the same memory reference and oh, there is already auto reload command we are running and we run start debug so whenever the code changes either in the container or in the local system it will re it will restart the application so this is the very basic setup we have done this is how the hot reload is happening this is my simple docker compose file we are doing an initial setup of uh, these two containers like the node.js and the postgres container because for setting up the prometheus and grafana we also need to introduce their containers but first of all we need to have a node.js up and running on the container with the postgres so here i can also show you when uh, node.js container is up and running it will be running the migrations so this is the migration script and here you can see it has actually executed the migration type or a migration against the postgres container and it is just executing this all create restaurant or these sql commands to populate the tables in the uh, postgres container and here is my application look like on the host because on the host i'm using 3010 which is pointing to the container port 3000. So this is the overall setup of uh, how all these things are connected to one another. So now in the next video, we will also talk about Prometheus and Grafana, what these are, and, and uh, we will start adding those uh, containers, Docker containers here. So we will have a big Docker Compose file with the, the Node.js, with the Postgres, with the Grafana and, and Prometheus. And we will see how they talk to each other to populate the nest.js application matrix to the grafana